Oh, you beauty. I wish I was writing you instead of doing Latin. Well, Master Tulliver, here is a new companion for you, sir. Come in, sir, come in. Don't hover in the cold. A new companion, sir. Does that please you? Yes, sir. I rather thought it would, Master Tulliver. Now you will no longer have to endure my undivided attention. How is your preparation this evening? Now, oh, shake hands, boys. Shake hands. Distinguish yourselves as gentlemen. Uh, Master Tulliver, Master Wakem. Wakem? You already know each other? No, sir, but I think my father knows Mr. Tulliver. Knows him? You know very well they're sworn enemies. Enough, sir. What is this nonsense? My father hates his father. He says all lawyers are rascals and made by the devil. Does he indeed? Well, that is no concern of ours, sir. And I will not have ill will between my pupils. Do you understand, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Indeed, sir. And now, Master Wakem, if you'll go to the fire whilst I take this gentleman to task regarding other matters. This, Master Tulliver, transcends the bounds of all possible stupidity. It is also in a disgusting condition. Have you been throwing ink at your paper throughout the entire preparation period? It fell off the pen, sir. You are clearly a boy whose powers will never be developed by means of the Latin grammar. No, sir. No, sir? Yes, sir, I say. To instill it with that thick head, sir, that is the only basis of solid instruction. Do you understand, sir? Yes, sir. All other methods of education are mere charlatanism and will produce nothing better than smatterers. Do you wish to be a smatterer, sir? No, sir. Do you wish to be a smatterer, Master Wakem? No, sir. No, sir, indeed not, sir. Uh, but unlike Tulliver here, you are not a thoroughly stupid lad. Have you no interest at all in what you're doing? No, sir. None at all. I see. Seems your faculties fail you, Master Tulliver, as soon as you're confronted by the pages of the Eton Grammar. And as to the demonstration that two given triangles must be equal, you're in a state bordering on idiocy. <clears throat> Tell me, Master Tulliver, which would you rather decline? Roast beef or the Latin for it? Roast beef, sir. Ah, so you have declined roast beef. I must see to it that Master Wakem has your share of dinner. <laughs> you will stay in tomorrow afternoon, rain or shine, and do extra Latin preparation. Now I will leave you to make acquaintance on your own before the dinner gone. No inky fingers, sir. Gentlemen with inky fingers dine al fresco. I'm sorry. What are you doing? Go away. If it's Latin, I might be able to help. I don't want your help. You're not going to play no spiteful tricks on me. I only wanted to be friends. Who wants a silly humpback as a friend? Time for bed, my girl. Just one more page, mother. What are you reading, lass? Come. Come and show me. All in her eyes at books all the time. It's not good for her. See, that's as far as I've got. Mm. That old woman in the water there is a witch. Mm. And they're trying to drown her. Mm -hmm. And that one there... Is a blacksmith. No, he's really the devil. Mm -hmm. He just looks like a blacksmith. Mm. Except his eyes all red. Mm. Lord, have mercy. What books the child got hold of? History of the Devil by Daniel Defoe. Maggie Tulliver. I like the pictures. You told me you were reading Pilgrim's Progress. Well, devil's in that too. Bed or a whipping? Off you go, lass. Do as your mother says. Ah, 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 ah. Good night, Father. I'll be up to see you shortly, my girl. Good night, lass. Bear. Only set her books, bless her heart. Hmm. It'll turn to trouble one day. You'll see. Uh, it's not good for her. <sighs> Still, I warrant she understands them better than folk twice her age. Yeah, you should hear her read, Mrs. T. Straight off. As though she knew it all beforehand. I've told you before, Jeremy. These books should be hidden high enough for her not to find them. 
They're not good for a, a woman has no business being clever. Haven't I always said the child will learn nothing but more mischief from reading? All the same, I could wish you were the lad instead of Tom. Eh, yeah, Maggie'd be a real match for lawyers like Wakeham. Shame on you, Jeremy. Tom's not stupid. Not stupid, no. But he's slow with his tongue and his spelling's all wrong. He can't abide books. The lad's got a notion for outdoor things and nothing else. You'd never hear him say sharp things like the little wench. No, that's true. Oh, it's so quiet with Tom away at school. Peaceful. What will it be like when Maggie goes away next year? Ah, uh, she seems to fill the house somehow, that little wench. Hmm, fills it with mischief. Jeremy. Uh -huh. Is he happy, do you think, away from home? Oh, I'm pleased we sent him there, Mrs. T. Stelling's a first-rate man. But he has nobody to play with, does he? At Jacob's Academy, he had so many friends. I'm about to have burnt offerings for me, T. Oh! Oh! Oh, dear! If right! If right! Head up, lad, head up! Right wheel! My shoulder hurts, Mr. Poulter. There ain't nothing hurts a soldier, lad. If, if. Well, could we do ground arms instead? Truly, it does hurt. Halt! Did you hear me say you could stop, lad? No, sir. But me shoulder. Wait. You'll never make a fighter, lad, if you treat your weapon like an old bone. Guns is for hanging on to, not for flinging away. Huh? Was General Wolf a good fighter, Mr. Poulter? <laughs> not at all. Nothing of the sort. Don't talk to me about General Wolf. He done nothing but die of his wounds. That's a poor action, isn't it? If you'd seen the wound I had, lad. It's medicinal, you see. Were it a big wound? Big? Huge it were. Healed in no time at all. Surgeon said he'd never seen flesh like it. Duke of Wellington himself, in strict privacy, you understand, so as not to make the others jealous. Mm -hmm. Wellington says, Poulter, he says, I am impressed with the superiority of your flesh. So don't talk to me of no General Wolf's. Just one of my sword cuts would have cut a puny thing like Wolf in half. That sword? <laughs> this very sword. Did it ever cut a Frenchman's head off? Often, lad, often. If they'd grown three heads on their shoulders, this sword's sharp enough to tack them off with one twitch. <laughs> Did you have a gun? And a bayonet, too? I'd like that better, I think. Then you could shoot him first. Bang! And spear him after. <laughs> but a sword's the thing when it comes to close fighting. One, two, three, ah! Hunger. Will you teach me how, Mr. Poulter? Teach you what, lad? Teach me to fight with your sword. Please. But the sword's too heavy for a lad. No, it ain't. Let me try, I'll show you. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, lad. Use this stick here as a sword to start with. Eh? We'll see what you do with the real thing when you've got some muscles on your arms. Well, like this. <laughs> no, you're not a windmill. <laughs> hey, here, on your horse, lad. Take your reins. Now. Idiots. Don't go bellowing at me like that. You're not fit to speak to anything but a cart horse. I'm fit to speak to something better than you, you deformed ninny. You're no better than a girl. 
La la la, the piano all day. Get out! Leave me alone! You can't even do drilling with Mr. Porter, you're so puny. Get out! Get out! I wouldn't stay here for a hundred guineas. I'm an honest man, son. And your father's a rogue. Everybody says so. You're nothing but an ill-natured humpback. Please, don't tear it up. It's a donkey. Here we bunny it. And what's this? That's partridges in a cornfield. See, there's one of them, and the other's under that tree flying away. And Mrs. Stelling to teach me drawing this half. I expect I should do it better than you. You can do it without learning. I was never taught. Well, I dare say I could do dogs and horses now if I tried. It's easy. You just look at things a long time and then you draw them over and over again until you get them right. I'll show you if you like. Were you ever taught Latin? Latin and Greek and mathematics. I can't think why anyone wants to learn Latin. My father says it's part of the education of a gentleman. He says all gentlemen learn the same things. Well, my father's a gentleman and he never learned Latin. I expect he did. I dare say he's just forgotten it. Oh, it's too cold to stay here. I'll help you with your Latin, if you like. Why? I'm good at Latin and Greek. I remember things easily. I know all about the Greeks and their battles. I could help you with history, too. Well, the Greeks great fighters. I mean, like Samson. Or David and Goliath. Those are the bits I like best in history. I know of a better giant than Goliath. He had one eye in the middle of his forehead, and the hero gets a red-hot pine tree and sticks it in his eye. Well, what happens then? You can read all about it. Mr. Stelling has the books in his library. I don't like reading. It's much more fun if someone tells stories. My sister Maggie tells stories a lot. You have a sister? Yes. She's just a silly girl. Aren't your fingers cold up here? Yes. Well, why don't you do your drawing in the library? I say, do you love your father? Yes, of course. Why don't you love yours? Oh, yes. Well, my father's not a rascal. One, two, three, and recover. <clears throat> Mr. Porter? Head up, lad, head up. And one. Could you. Would you lend me your sword to keep for a while? Lend? Certainly not, lad. If I promise not to take it out of its sheath? No, oh, oh, that wouldn't do at all. <laughs> do yourself some mischief with it. Mr. Porter? Aye. Ah. If you let me keep your sword for a week, I'd give you this five shilling piece. I only wanted to show it to my sister Maggie. She's coming to stay on Tuesday. I could tie it round my waist with a comforter, make believe that it's mine. She'll think I'm going to be a soldier, you see. Uh, well, now, lad, if, uh, if I take that crown piece, it's just to make sure, as you'll do no mischief with the sword. Oh, no, I won't, I promise. And I'll hide it so Mr. Stelling won't see it. What if he catches you carrying it in? He won't. He always keeps in his upstairs study on Thursday afternoons. Now, go, see, he's my lawyer. But he's not up to the law as we come is. And what is a very particular thing, Mr. Stelling? Very particular. For sure, sir. You can't pick it up with a pitchfork. Well, it's plain enough what's the rights and wrongs of water. A river is a river. And if you have a mill wheel, you want water to turn it. Common sense, sir. Uh, it's no use telling me that these new dikes and irrigations won't injure the mill. Well, if that's what Pivard and Wakeham are up to, I shall put Tom to it by and by and see if he doesn't make some sense of it. I'm sorry to see you so put out, Mr. Tulliver. But I feel bound to tell you that it may be some years before Tom can help you in these matters. 
Is he stupid, then? No, no, on the contrary, very sharp. But only in things not academic. Come in, sir. Tom! Well, Master Tulliver, here is your sister come to stay with you, and your father must leave again at once. Uh, perhaps uh, you would care to visit me in my upstairs study. No, ah, Mr. Stilly, you no, know, come up by and by. Well, Tom, lad, you look really. School agrees with you. Oh, I don't think I am well, Father. I wish you'd ask Mr. Stelly not to let me do Euclid. Euclid? What's Euclid? Oh, I don't know. But it brings on the toothache. I don't like it here, Father. I had much more fun at the Academy. Now, Tom, you must do as Mr. Stelling tells you. He knows what's right. I'll help you. You? I'd like to see you doing my lessons. Girls are never made to learn Latin. They're too silly. I know very well what Latin is. It's a language. There are lots of Latin words in my dictionary. Give me one, then. Bonus, it means a gift. Well, you're wrong, Miss Clever, because bonus means good. It can mean a gift as well. Some things mean more than one thing. Like lawn. It means grass. It means the stuffed bucket handkerchiefs made of two. <laughs> well, she's beaten you there, lad. Well done, little one. <laughs> well, your mother will only fret if I'm not back before dark, so uh, come and give your father a good bite, Tom. I'll be good mind. No mischief. Father, lawyer, where come son is here? Ah, I've seen the boy. You don't want me to be at school with a Wakeham, do you, father? He couldn't choose his father now, could he, Tom? You should feel sorry for the boy because the man's such a scoundrel. Sorry for him, not I. Oh, try not to get too thick with him. But if he's good to you, try and be good to him. I've always had a tenderness for wry neck lambs. Sunt esiam volucrum. Repeat it, please. Sunt esiam volucrum. Ut Austria. No, no, concentrate, boy. Shoo. Like that. If you do that, I'll take oh, your yes, man the next move. Now. Try Repeat again. Continue. Oh, yes, buses. Rundo. Oh, you soon be better than me. Ferrari. Ferrarium ut Austria. No, no, ut tigris, you imbecile. Uh, ut tigris. Et piscium. Ut tigris vulpes et piscium. Oh, no, enough. Go away. Take your book back to the table. Master Wakeham. Ah, let's see what you can do. Cicero's letters to Atticus. I said you weren't to speak to him. Four, I like him. And he's teaching me to play it's draft. Sister, you heard Father say not to get you thick with him. I think he's I mean, lonely. He's the son of a rogue. And the court could be as bad as sire. Good. Stop. Well, sir, I sent you over here to work. What am I to work at, sir? You have ten minutes before the dinner gong. Less chatter with your sister, I think, and more application to your Latin grammar. Please, Mr. Stelling, couldn't I do Virgil too? If you were to teach me, then I could help Tom. Oh, no, you couldn't. Girls can't do Latin, can they, sir? Girls can pick up a little of everything, I dare say. Girls have a great deal of superficial cleverness, but they never stay long at anything. Girls on the whole, sir, are quick and shallow. Ha, Miss Maggie, you see, you're just quick and shallow. Stand up and hide your eyes. What for? Do as I say. You've got a surprise. If this is a trick, Tom, I shan't play with you anymore. You're peeping. Turn your back. You must promise not to squeal. If I'm found out, I get 50 lines at least. Can I look now? Now. I'm the Duke of Wellington. March or die! Stop it, Tom! Do stop now, it's dangerous. Tom, what is it? Has the doctor gone? Tom was very brave. He didn't cry at all. 
I spoke to Mr. Stelling. He said Tom won't be lame, not permanently. It would have been very hard for him to be lame, wouldn't it? He's so good at games. If you had a brother like me, could you love me as much as you love Tom? Oh, yes. I'd love you better. No, not better. I don't think I could love anyone better than Tom. But I'd be very sorry for you. I wish you could be my brother too, Philip. You're so clever. And you could stay at home when Tom went out and teach me things. But you leave the day after tomorrow and then you'll forget all about me. Perhaps one day we'll meet again when we're grown up and you won't take any notice of me. I never forget anything. I think about everybody when I'm away from them. I've been thinking about months while I'm here. He's got a lump in his throat and Bob Jakin says he'll die. He's an ugly little dog. No one cares for him but Bob Jakin and me. Could you care for me as much as you do for months? Oh, yes, of course. I shall never forget you. I think you're fonder of me than Tom is. When I'm very unhappy, I shall always think of you and your dark eyes looking at me. I don't much like people to stare at me, but I don't mind when you do it. Sometimes I kiss Tom. Nobody kisses me. I shall. Would you like that? Very much. There. Now I shall always remember you. And I kiss you when we meet again. However long it is till then. <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> rest easy, lad, rest easy. I'm not a bit tired. <sighs> Here. You're a good little soldier, Master Tulliver. Wounded in action, like you. Aye, but not telling on me like you might have. Take the coin back, lad. You deserve it. But I gave it you fair and square in return for the sword. I'll not keep it after what happened. That in fitting. Will you promise one day to teach me to fight with real swords? <laughs> one day I'll make a proper little fighter of you. Go on. On that day, then, keep the coin and give it back the day I better you with the sword. So be it. What well, order's an order. On guard, Sergeant Poulter. Aye, sir. Take your coin now. You've won it ten times over already this year. No. Let it hang there. Forever. To inspire others. You'll be my last, Mr. Tulliver, sir. You'll be my last. Mr. Tulliver? Yes, sir? Your sister, sir. Maggie? She has come to see you. Come, sir, come. She's waiting for you in the library. Maggie? What is it? What's happened? His father. Oh, the lawsuit. He's lost it. And he was so certain he was going to win. How did he take it? Well, at first he was so angry I thought he might have a fit. But now he's so strange. He talks as if nothing's wrong, as if everything will be all right. Poor mother's at her wit's end. How can everything be all right? You're to come home with me, Tom. Mother sent me to fetch you. But I've got examinations in a week. Well, father will need you at the mill, Tom. And anyway... What with having to pay costs, he can no longer afford to let us stay at school. Not now. He has terrible debts to pay. We shall lose everything. Money, mill, land, everything. We'll have nothing left in the world except the clothes we stand up in. <laughs> 